So this is my 2019 Tesla Model 3 and today is the last day that I'm gonna have it. This week I'll be returning it for the end of the lease, upgrading to a 2022, 2023, I don't know how Tesla does their model years, uh, long range Model 3. And I wanna show you what has been good about this car, what not so good and how it's worked as a family car for the last three years. This is standard range Tesla Model 3 that I got back in 2019. And it now has just over 25,000 miles on it. It's been used pretty heavily as a family car, especially the last couple of years uh, when we had our third kid. I'll also be doing a comparison of the Model Y when I get that in about a week. And if you want to see that, make sure to subscribe. Now, the Model 3 was the first electric car that I've ever had, and I've absolutely loved it. There are a couple of things weren't so great about it. So I've put just over 25,000 miles on this car. Been a couple of road trips, but mostly stayed pretty local with it. It's been kind of my commuting car and then short trips on weekends with the kids. We did take it on two longer road trips up to Vermont uh, for ski trips in the last couple of years. One time by myself, one time with the twins with me, one of our friends. My wife took our SUV up uh, for more space. Actually worked very well on the road trip. One of the best things about Tesla, it has to of course be the su great supercharging network. You can pretty much find a charger anytime that you need one and the charging is super fast and convenient. One of the best things about owning a Tesla compared to other electric cars. Although now that some of the other charging networks like Electrify America, ChargePoint, even just some public chargers are more widely available, it's not so much of an advantage anymore, but it's definitely nice to know that pretty much anywhere you're going, you're going to be able to find a supercharger. So this is the standard range version of the Model 3, which is the cheapest version. I uh, ended up getting this after looking at the long range version because I figured with our second car, we could use that for most of our longer trips and so since most of my driving is very local just driving over to where i get the bus uh, into work and especially since the pandemic I haven't really been going into the office very much so i haven't needed to put very many miles on it we leased this a low mileage lease of ten thousand a year and i'm still under by about five thousand on that the lease ending this week we've also taken this car on a couple of beach trips which you'll see all of the sand is still pretty much in the car and it's been great because you can really fit a lot more than you think you might be able to between the trunk uh, putting the seats down and a nice large front trunk which i'll show as well now when this car is returned this week i'll actually be picking up a new long range model 3 which I decided to do to have a little bit more range, uh, make some of the road trips a little bit easier, maybe only have to do a one stop up to Vermont instead of two. Also to have all wheel drive, which especially around here with the snow that we get is very often useful. I also have a Model Y that I ordered coming in in another week. All of the cars are uh, this wonderful blue color. And I had decided to do that early on because I thought we might want a little bit more space and especially in the back seat, which can get a little bit tight with all three kids in. So I had ordered the Model Y about nine months ago because the wait times were so long. Figured that I would always be able to change the order to a three if I really wanted to. Although I then found out that Tesla doesn't actually let you change from one model to the other without losing your deposit. So instead I decided to just keep the reservation. Um, in the meantime, the value of the Y has gone up so much that I'm actually probably going to keep it and potentially sell it right away, or we'll see what we end up doing with it. If you're interested in seeing a comparison of this, the three-year-old Model 3 versus the brand new one that I'm about to get, do subscribe and I'll have that video out probably in a week or so. I also have a deposit down on the Rivian R1S to potentially replace our large family SUV and that's available, although it's probably still going to be another year or so for that. Um, but I have that coming along, 
and I'm in the process of getting an order in on a Mustang Mach-E from Ford, which I actually anticipate using to replace the Tesla once I'm able to get that, uh, which could be anywhere from a week or two, depending on what they have available, to almost a year if I end up having to put in an order for the 2023 model. So this car has been my car for the majority of the time, although I have been using it pretty heavily with the kids as well. And you see, it actually can fit all three kids in the back seat. Just takes a little bit of creativity to fit everyone in. So some of the nice things about the Tesla, you have a lot of room for storage, way more than you would think. You actually have this wonderful front trunk. It's good enough to fit, you know, maybe a duffel bag, a couple of other things. We use it for groceries sometimes. Not as much as on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's really nice to have for a little bit of overflow when I uh, need a little bit of extra space, especially with the three kids. Also have quite a bit of room in the trunk, more than you would think. Sort of hatchback style here actually ends up giving a lot more room than you would think. The fact that there's uh, nothing underneath the trunk here means that there's more storage uh, that goes down in here. So you say you get you know, a few feet in here, plenty of space for uh, our big stroller. I fit my skis in here. I can fit you know, a couple of suitcases. And then you've also got room down in here uh, which we often use for groceries and anything else that we just want to throw in and let roll around a little bit. And you've got this deep pocket over here too. One of the nicest things about Tesla is the app, which allows you to do lots of different controls. You see here, I can open the uh, front trunk and the uh, trunk itself, open and close the doors, the windows, lock and unlock it. can even set the temperature remotely, uh, which has been great in the winter and when it's really hot out see things like the charging uh, stat, which has been great lately. You can see how much I've charged and uh, how much I've even saved over having gas. You can see I don't really drive too much on a, on a regular basis, but um, we have been able to get some charging at home and a, as well as a little bit out in public. Uh, the zoo here actually has free public chargers that we uh, ended up using last weekend. We were sitting there and then ended up coming back home with more charge on the car than when we had left. Now, coming into the car itself, you can see how well loved and used this car has been. We even had mats in here that I just took out, and you can see just how uh, much stuff is accumulated in here. Passenger side isn't quite so bad. <laughs> Back definitely is from the kids, the dog, our beach trips. Probably still some dirt and cinders in here from all of our ski trips as well. One of the more interesting and maybe controversial things about the Tesla is this big front screen. So you can see that in the Model 3, there is no display or instrument uh, gauges or cluster right in front of the steering wheel. Everything is just in this large center mounted screen here. Honestly, I think it's pretty great. I haven't ever really thought about not having anything else. You just get used to it when you are driving. You have all of your information here. You can see your speed. You can see the uh, cars around you, uh, people uh, all here on this part, which is fantastic. Um, this navigation is great, it's Google. Um, one of the downsides of the standard range model is you don't get some of the nicer features like having traffic shown on the screen, but the routing itself still takes traffic into account. So it's always been very good and reliable in terms of getting us places quickly. It is using Google Maps behind the scenes and I've always found the directions that actually very good. One of the other great things that Tesla does is if you're going on a longer trip, let's say we want to go up to our favorite spot to ski in Stowe. See, it'll actually find superchargers along the way and tell you exactly where to stop, how long, what percentage you need to charge to and get you there with uh, just enough charge, which is fantastic. So it would take me about uh, six and a half hours right now to get up to Stowe, which is honestly not that bad. That's barely adding any time at all. Yeah, you can see that the stops themselves are pretty short. It's going for three stops, which is probably more than I would do. I would maybe stop and charge a bit longer. Gilderland one, which I think is outside of Albany. I think there's some food and stuff there. 
make that probably a you know 45 minute stop, get it charged almost up to 100%, and then keep going as far as I could. I'm not sure about this Rutland one, uh, but I know that there's one outside of Burlington, Vermont, which is a uh, even faster charger and the closest one that you can find near Stowe. So I'd probably go there and then charge up as much as possible just to have a little bit of buffer driving around. But anyway, great you know, recommendations here, pretty reliable. Yeah, you know, this would certainly work even though I know that there are you know, a couple of other options of what to do. The other great thing about this screen, super responsive. You know, it's basically like having a big iPad in the car, very usable. Don't love some of the aspects of the design that they uh, sent out a couple of months ago that moved everything kind of down here. Some of the things are a little bit irritating, like to get to the seat, uh, heated seats, you have to go is it in here, turn them on from here. Some things are just a couple more clicks than I would like, but what can you do? You know, lots of options in here. Some of the nice things about this car, especially that make it a great car for kids and having a family are these random little extras or Easter eggs in the car. The kids think that this farting one is absolutely hysterical. And because of the great speakers in the car, you can actually make it sound like it's in different parts of the car. So they like playing the game of who farted. I don't use the other ones all that much, but you can see, you know, you've got things in here even like the availability to fully make a custom music tracks, which I played around with a little bit before. They also love this Santa Claus one, uh, especially in the winter, that makes your car on the navigation look like Santa and that it's snowing. And every time you hit the turn signal, you get the Jingle Bells song. And then this Rainbow Road one, they ask for all the time. I'm not gonna do it because I'm super sick of hearing it but does the more cowbell sketch from Saturday Night Live. And then when you're on autopilot, which is when the car drives itself, it'll show this rainbow instead. Autopilot itself is another fantastic feature, probably something I could never live without having in a car now at this point. Tesla's is fantastic. I've never driven another one even close to this good. Basically, as long as you're on, doesn't even have to be a highway, even local roads, as long as there are decent lane markers, it'll figure out exactly where it is. It'll keep you right in the lane and steer for you. Got to keep your hand on the wheel and give a little bit of torque pressure so that it knows you have your hands on and can take over if you need to. But honestly, it's fantastic. It almost never disengages. It used to periodically veer when there would be an off ramp, but even that has gotten a lot better, which is another big advantage of the Tesla. The over the air software upgrades mean that this car has continuously gotten better over the last three years. Even with a little bit of degradation in the battery range from driving this car for three years, which has probably only been you know, less than five miles total range that I've lost. I think I've actually netted out more positive because they pushed some upgrades early on that actually increased the range a little bit and unlocked a bit more of the battery than what had been there before. So another nice thing about this car, very roomy for how big the car actually is. I'm about 6'1", and you can see I have a ton of headroom here, thanks to the panoramic glass roof. In the back, even, I can fit in there fairly comfortably. No issues with leg room, certainly not with headroom because of how much space is there. And you can see, you know, we've got plenty of room here for all three of the kids. So usually we'll have this bigger car seat for the young sir in the middle here, and then the twins who are six get their boosters on both sides. It just fits. It makes it a little bit hard to get the seat belts in to, to juggle it underneath, but it all works and everyone's been pretty comfortable in it. Model Y is a couple of inches wider. And so that was part of the reason that we were considering getting one, just because it would make it a little bit easier to get the seats in and to deal with the seat belts. And I'll show why that's a little bit of a pain in a second. All right, so I'm gonna show how we get the three car seats in here and just how much room you've actually got. So you can see we've got the larger car seat in here in the middle, and then these boosters, which I could take the back off of, but it really doesn't make too much of a difference. Put that in there. And then the only tricky part, other than lifting a 30 pound two year old into the middle there, is getting the seat belt in. Just gonna do a little bit of gymnastics to kind of pull it out all the way, and then wedge your arm down in here to like actually get where the seatbelt slot is. But now that I've gotten used to it, it's really not so bad. First couple of times probably took me 10 minutes of sweating and cursing to get it in there. But now that I know exactly where it is, it's not so bad. It'd be nice if it were a little bit wider. And the one issue is the middle seat here doesn't have latches themselves. So I have to use the latches of each of the left and right seat for the car seat in the middle here. But it ends up working fine. It's nice and secure. I've yanked and pulled on it just to make sure. And it's, it's definitely safe. It just makes it so that there's a little bit less room in here. So I've had this car for about three years now. And how has it held up? 
actually fairly well. Only real signs of wear. You got all this wear on the tire here. This is from hitting the curb way more than I should. Now this is 99% my fault. Uh, I should be a bit better with the way that I'm approaching the curbs and stuff. But I do want to say I've never had this issue on any other car that I've owned. There's something about the way that the wheels stick out from the tire here on the Tesla and from the body of the car that makes it much more likely to happen. I've seen a lot of other Teslas driving around, especially you know, in our neighborhood and around New Jersey, that have very similar wear across all of their wheels. So you can just see like how often I've ended up scraping and smashing the curb there. And as part of the lease return, Tesla's charging me for three of the wheels having this damage on it. You can see this one too, a little bit less. This one is the only one that didn't have any. So this is the front driver wheel has no damage. And the driver rear wheel, even that one, got quite dinged up. It's kind of hard to tell how the car's holding up. We've done a really bad job keeping it clean. It's supposed to rain today, so I'm hoping that helps a little bit, but no major scratches or anything. The paint's held up fairly well. It's super dirty, which is probably hiding a little bit. I think there are a couple of dings here on the front. This style of bumper that's really flat means that bugs hit it pretty hard, and as do some rocks and other debris from the uh, highway especially. So there's some chips and stuff here, but nothing too bad. I don't know what this is, probably from, yeah, from my kids touching it. And then the only other thing that they charged me for is the wear on these back tires here, which you can see, yeah, they are fairly worn down. This is one of the big disadvantages of the standard range Tesla, which is rear wheel drive only, as opposed to the long range model, which is all wheel drive. You get a lot more wear on these back tires here. And I will say like, uh, I think it's a combination of the weight of the batteries in the car and the aggressiveness of the acceleration from an electric car that really means you're putting a lot more wear on these back tires than you would in any other car. For a car with only 25,000 miles on it, it's pretty surprising that these are worn down as much as they are, especially when you compare them to the front tires. Which still have a lot of tread on them. That would be one reason to recommend the long range over the standard range, just to get a little bit more even tire wear and probably eke out a bit more life in the back tires. The only other issue I've had with this car will periodically get uh, what is shown as a charging fault on the front screen here. Usually during regenerative braking, which is when you let your foot up off the pedal, I have mine set to be the most aggressive version of regenerative braking, meaning that the second I lift my foot off the pedal, the car will start braking like without me having to touch the brake. And it will actually put some energy back into the batteries from doing that but I've noticed that mine will, every once in a while, I don't know if it's, I haven't seemed to notice that it's like the car is cold or too hot or anything that ties to it, but it'll just periodically give me a warning and say charging fault, check your equipment or something like that. It hasn't been enough that it's been anything other than like irritating. So I haven't bothered taking it in to get fixed or anything. I'm sure they would, but just didn't seem worth it. And the only issue I ever had that actually needed to be fixed on the car when I first got it, the liner here in the trunk ended up getting disconnected and like falling basically all the way down and be rattling all the time. I'm not sure how much that was the car itself and how much it was us putting the stroller in and out of here, but their service was great. I did it all through the app, just took a picture of it, and they sent somebody out within a day or two and were able to fix it without me even having to talk to them at all, all just in the driveway, which was fantastic and super easy and they took care of all of it. I didn't have to pay anything or anything like that. So some of the differences that this version of the car has with the new long range that will be coming in. First is the center console here. So you can see in this one, it is all this piano black, which looks nice when you very first get the car and then immediately you realize is awful. You can just see how it accumulates fingerprints, dust, grime. It's impossible to keep it clean. And they have changed this now, which I'm happy about. Uh, I believe they've also changed the design of these panels which are not really great. They're just held in place by magnets. You have to close them super softly. You can see I, after three years, have finally figured out how to do it the right way. But most of the time, you'll find you're gonna close it and it just does this all the time. So yeah, you see the car even yells at me to close it more gently. So that's annoying, I think they fixed that. This is also the standard phone pad that comes in here. It is not wireless charging. I ended up buying an aftermarket one on Amazon, which was really cheap and easy to install. You just pull this thing out. And there were two cords that you could put in through here, which are USB. 
they plugged into here to provide power and that just made this a wireless charging pad for both of our phones, which was great to have. So I highly recommend that, although in the newer version of the car, that is a wireless charging pad for phones, so you don't necessarily need that. One of the things I don't love about this is it is a great system on here, but it would be nice for this to be more extensible and have some other options. There is no CarPlay from Apple available. There's no Android Auto, which means you're stuck using this navigation and the music selection and things on here. I have Apple Music, not Spotify, and this only supports Spotify, which is kind of a pain. You know, I, I do just use my phone through Bluetooth to listen to music all the time, but it's still a little bit of pain to have to deal with that you know, as you're driving or like right, remember to do it right when you get in the car. It would be nice if this just had CarPlay like pretty much every other car that's come out in the last three years is at. My wife's car has that and I absolutely love it. It's nice to be able to pick what navigation you're using as well as the music provider. One of the other things that's been really nice in here with the kids, especially on the road trips when we have gone and had to stop at chargers for a while, is to have some of these options for videos on here. So we were able to use Netflix and watch a couple of kid shows while we sat in charge on our way up to Vermont. Um, you either need to pay $10 a month for premium connectivity for this to have the cell service, which I don't have, or what I ended up doing was just using my phone for tethering, connected this over Wi-Fi and was able to watch it pretty much fine at all, of, all four of the supercharging stops that we stopped at, including even some that were a little bit more remote in upstate New York and Vermont. So all of that worked really well. That you know, There's a little bit of buffering and the quality wasn't great when I first started, but it all caught up and worked very well. Actually too well, we weren't able to finish watching any of the shows that we started watching because the car charges so fast. And so the kids were pretty unhappy that we weren't able to finish the episodes that we were watching before we had to leave the charger and start our drive again. Another great thing about having this Tesla is the charging itself is just so fast and so convenient. All of the chargers that we've stopped at have been either at places where there are restaurants or other things to see and do, and lots of options around. And we actually find that the charging time isn't a problem at all. It's almost too fast. The last two times that we stopped, we ended up stopping for food. And by the time you know we ordered, our food came, when we started eating, I was already getting a notification that the car was almost fully charged and that if I didn't move it, I would start getting charged idle fees. Actually, both times were fairly late in the day and the chargers were pretty empty, so there was no idle fee, but it just shows how fast this car charges. Having a little bit less range on the standard range version means that it can charge you know, almost empty all the way to full in about 40, 45 minutes, which goes way faster than you expect, especially if you have something else to do and having some of the entertainment options in the car really does make it feel a lot faster too. So I've never had an issue with having to stop and charge. I know that's one of the biggest concerns with electric cars is, you know, I'm gonna have to stop and charge on all these trips, but first of all, it's so rare that you even have to do that. Being able to charge at home means that you can skip all the gas stops all the time. This car is only probably charged once a week anyway with how much we use it, but even with that, you know, I plug it in when you get back home, then in the morning I unplug it and it's fully charged. I never have to worry about, oh, am I almost out of gas? Do I need to stop today? What's the price? Especially lately as things have gone up so crazy. I have that anxiety with our other car, the SUV, but this car I just always know is gonna be fully charged and exactly how far I can go with it. And at worst, we can use the superchargers if we need to. The other really nice thing about being able to charge at home is that you actually don't need to stop for supercharging anywhere as often as you think you do. In the three years that I've had this car, I've supercharged it a grand total of five times. Four were on Vermont trips, and one was for a wedding that we went to in upstate New York. And so I feel like I've barely been able to even see the superchargers because you really don't need them very often. The only other thing I'll say hasn't worn especially well in this car is the back seats. And in particular, the back of the front seats, which do get kicked and scraped all the time from our kids' feet, but you can just see how you know dirty they constantly get. They're all scratched up. This part is one of the probably the worst materials in the whole car. It's just a you know fairly cheap plastic. Everything else is nice with this you know vegan leather they call it. Even this is sort of a you know suede like fake leather kind of feel, but this part's just you know cheap plastic. And so, you know, it's not like it's cracking or breaking or anything, but it really has gotten really scratched up and dinged. Similar with these seats back here. You know, I don't think there's anything in here that wouldn't come out with some great strong cleaner, but they do get really dirty. 
especially with the kids and the dog. We try to keep them from eating and stuff in here as much as possible, but you can just see stuff accumulates. The way that these seats are designed, things do pool up in them. And you can see some sand from the last time we were at the beach. I'm sure there's some, you know, there's a Cheerio there. Uh, some goldfish must be floating around here too. So things really do just accumulate here. One other thing that I don't like in the Model 3 is that this center console is not independent from the seat. So you can't just put it down to put something through there. You have to put the entire seat down, which for us is impossible. I always have at least the twins with me whenever I need to put something in here. So for our skiing trips, that's been incredibly inconvenient because can't put that down to put the skis in. So I always have to take the other car. All right, Axel, can you tell me all about Daddy's car and what things we like and what things you don't like about it? Our car is a, a latchwick car. It does not have back other car seats like mommy's car. Like a third row, you mean? Mm -hmm. mm, is that good or bad? Bad. Why is that bad? Oh, actually it's not bad. Do you like sitting like that with all three of you there, or do you like having more space like in Mommy's car? I like having more space in Mommy's car. Do you want to show us inside and how you sit in there? Uh-huh. So, here is our car seats, and here's our skylight. Here's the, whatever that's called. Here's the steering wheel. Here is our car seat. What stuff do you like in Daddy's car? I like the way that it has the left stuff. You like having the movies and stuff in here? Mm -hmm. And what else? What are your other favorite things in here? We also have a baby one's coffee and a big bottle's coffee in here. But there's a lot of and then it shows the map on here. Here's the floor. And there's the floor. Doing the 40 stuff like uh, that. that. Uh. I like the way it shows that. The rainbow bridge. I also like the way it says Lehigh in the back. It's pretty hot in here while it's driving. I like that they go up, down a little bit. And here's our, our tiles. It also shows that. And here is where we get the gas. Well, actually, we don't get gas. We got a, less, a lot of electric. So one of the other big differences and probably the most controversial thing that Tesla's done lately is actually remove the mobile charging connector. So here's where you charge the car. Just plug in there. Yeah. So here we have the mobile charging connector, which is a charger, which the car came with before, but they're now charging extra for. And this is, it's not gonna reach out. And this is perfect for us charging at home. We actually just have a standard 240 volts NEMA 1450 outlet here that we just plug this into. And this gives us great charging power for the car. And so it's super convenient to have this. We never felt like we needed the full install charger and have always just used this one at home. But now they don't give you this with the car anymore. So we're gonna have to figure out exactly what we're gonna do with it since we definitely need this to keep the car charged at home. And here is our car seats. So that's the Tesla Model 3, from my perspective at least. Like I said, we're gonna have the new model coming in this week. So I'll have a video review of that coming up soon, comparing it with this car and seeing how much has changed in the Teslas over the last three years. But that's what I think about it. And now it's time to learn what the most important person thinks about it. What do you think, Axel? Not sure.